Mr. Kacic, um, I mentioned earlier the assignment of this case by the President to Trial Chamber 1. And as a presiding judge of this trial chamber, I have designated myself as pre-trial judge in your case by an order dated the 30th of July 2008. The trial chamber will be composed uh, by myself, Judge Christine van der Weingaard and Judge Bacone Justice Molotto. We earlier briefly discussed the uh, appearance in which you'll be, in which you should enter a plea, and you said if it's not the 28th, it's fine with me. Um, I hereby uh, schedule a further appearance on Friday, the 29th of August, at a quarter past two in the afternoon. Mr. Karcic, by an order issued on the 30th of July 2008, um, you remain in custody at the United Nations Detention Unit pending trial. However, you may file an application for provisional release pursuant to Rule 65 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence. I earlier mentioned to you in um, the beginning of these proceedings uh, that you have a fundamental right before the tribunal to remain silent in these proceedings and that it will not be held against you. I now wish to have Rule 63 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence read to you as it concerns the topic of questioning of an accused. Um, Madam Rule 63, questioning of accused. A. Questioning by the prosecutor of an accused, including after the initial appearance, shall not proceed without the presence of counsel unless the accused has voluntarily and expressly agreed to proceed without counsel present. If the accused subsequently expresses the desire to have counsel, Questioning shall thereupon cease and shall only resume when the accused counsel is present. B. The questioning, including any waiver of the right to counsel, shall be audio recorded or video recorded in accordance with the procedure provided for in Rule 43. The prosecutor shall, at the beginning of the questioning, caution the accused in accordance with Rule 42A3. Thank you. Madam Register, <clears throat> I'd now like to address the prosecution. Um, I'd like to remind you that uh, pursuant to Rule 66, subparagraph A, subparagraph 1 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, that within 30 days of the initial appearance of the accused, that you shall make available to the defense in a language which the accused understands all the supporting materials which accompanied the indictment when confirmation was sought. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the prosecution, of course, is aware of its obligations under Rule 66A, uh, small i, and anticipate the disclosure pursuant to that rule uh, will be made um, tomorrow or shortly thereafter. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Tiga. Um, Mr. Karadzic, I'd like to remind you that um, the defense, pursuant to Rule 72A of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Tribunal, that you'll have a 30-day period for filing any preliminary motions once you have received all the supporting material in accordance with Rule 66 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Tribunal. 
Then, <clears throat> Mr. Barmat or Mr. Tiga, is there any matter that the prosecution would like to raise at this stage? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Um, perhaps by way of clarification, um, as the prosecutor indicate, indicated, um, we are reviewing the operative indictment to ensure, among other things, that, that it reflects um, the jurisprudence um, since the time of the current indictment, since the time it was uh, drafted and filed. Um, we uh, will endeavor, as the prosecutor indicated, to move forward as quickly as possible. I anticipate that certainly by the date of the next hearing, um, if uh, we'll be able to provide the court with a uh, concrete um, anticipated date uh, for the filing of any amended indictment. Uh, in the yes. meantime, um, the provisions of this indictment, as the court indicated in noting that um, a an amended indictment may, may not reflect new charges um, is of great utility in identifying the anticipated charges against the accused. Yes. We'll see how to proceed, uh, Mr. Kautic, Mr. Tiga. Um, at this moment, we are working on the basis of the operative indictment. If a new indictment will be proposed by the prosecution or if amendments will be proposed by the prosecution, then we'll first follow the proper procedure to see whether uh, there will be an amended indictment or whether it stays as it is now. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Gautic, is uh, there a... Yes, Mr. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, I was wondering if the court might consider issuing a standard disclosure order um, in relation to the materials that will be disclosed. Yes, and disclosure will take place tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, that's what you said. That's our expectation. Then uh, we'll take care that if <clears throat> such an order will be issued, that it will be there in time. Uh, so if we would decide to uh, give such an order, it would be most likely be filed tomorrow. Um, or you would correct. like it to have it orally done at this moment? As the court wishes, Your Honor, that's fine. I think and, it's... And uh, let me just confirm one second. Yes, I'm not given oral order at this moment, but uh, we'll take care that it's uh, that it will be filed uh, in time, Fine. if there is one. Fine. And I didn't know if the court wished to defer um, or um, address at this time uh, any issues related to self-representation, including the um, risks of self-representation in complex cases and other matters related to self-representation. Um, <clears throat> Self-representation is an issue um, which might need a lot of attention in the near future. Um, as far as I understand, uh, no notice had, has yet been given by Mr. Courtage to the uh, to the registrar that he wants to defend himself in the whole of the proceedings. Of course, if he would file such a notice. Uh, then we'll pay proper attention to what it means, what it takes to represent yourself, Mr. Gartic. Um, <clears throat> I, I could um, give already a few key words for that. Um, <clears throat> But we are not there yet because until now you said you did not want to be assisted or represented by counsel during this initial appearance. Um, let me just find the keywords. If, if we are talking about <clears throat> self-representation and uh, still there has not been filed any notice at this moment, but um, the right to self-representation is a qualified right, but not an absolute right. 
uh, that right may be restricted under certain circumstances. Um, if an accused uh, would elect to represent himself, then he also should accept responsibility for disadvantages which result from self-representation uh, in the absence of qualified counsel. Um, an accused who represents himself is not given special treatment. Further, there is no provision for legal aid to be given to a self-represented accused. Some funding may be allowed for assistance by legal associates who fulfill the necessary requirements under the rules of procedure and evidence, but the right to privileged access to such legal associates cannot be guaranteed. These and other related matters, such as communication and translation facilities for self-representation, should be further discussed by the Registrar. Um, rule 45F requires someone who elects to represent himself to notify the Registrar in writing as soon as possible. Perhaps this is all premature, Mr. Karadzic. We only established that <clears throat> you are not assisted by counsel or represented by counsel during this initial appearance. We'll see what the future brings. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Karadzic, is there anything you would like to raise which would be appropriate to be raised in this um, initial appearance and that is not the substance of the case not preliminary defenses yet we'll find time to spend time on whatever you'll submit in the near future is there anything you'd like to raise at this moment Yes. First of all, I wish to say that I thought it was understood that I intend to represent myself not only during my initial appearance, but throughout the trial, regardless of what I think about this institution with all due respect to you personally, I will defend myself before this institution as I would defend myself before any natural catastrophe to which I also deny the right to attack me. I wish to draw attention to the fact that you have been misinformed about the date of my arrest and also to inform you of the numerous irregularities Irregularities concerning my relation to this institution and my appearance here. This does not refer to the merits of the case, but exclusively to procedural irregularities in my arrival here. By your leave. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Karadzic, uh, most of what you just told me uh, first of all, that you <clears throat> wish to represent yourself, I already informed you about the requirement under Rule 45F. So if you want to represent yourself uh, after due consideration whether uh, that would be the best solution, uh, then you have to, as being self-represented, you have to notify the registrar in accordance with Rule 45F. Now, uh, as far as irregularities are concerned, <coughs> the, <coughs> the legal meaning of pointing at irregularities could be manifold. It could be that you challenge the rightfulness of your detention here, that you challenge the uh, exercise of our jurisdiction in this court. It could mean a lot of things. And even if it does not go to the substance of the case, uh, even formal matters which arise from the kind of issues you raised, of course, they can be dealt with, for example, in the preliminary motions uh, which I mentioned earlier. 
So if you want these matters to be given proper attention, you should include them in submissions to be made to the Chamber, and then depending on what your submissions are aiming for, we would have in a public hearing we should deal with these matters. Um, if you file submissions, these will be public documents. So if there were any irregularities um, of whatever kind, then you are invited to uh, include them in any submissions, either in preliminary motions or other motions, so that the Chamber can read them and that we will consider them, if need be, after having heard the prosecution and yourself, whether or not in writing or in a public hearing. Is that clear to you? Yes, but this is not about challenging the tribunal or except in a certain segment uh, the uh, proceedings of the OTP. Rather, it has to do with the way I have been brought here. If you will allow me to explain it, then it will become quite clear what my attitude toward this institution has been from the moment the indictment was filed against me to this day. I will be very brief. Uh, I have only four pages uh, to read out, but I think it would be fair to allow me to point out all the things that have happened concerning uh, my being brought here. Um, I do not mind if you would briefly mention the issues, but I would prefer, since we are here in an initial appearance and not in an ordinary session with the Chamber, I'm here alone, not with my colleagues, uh, that you would make submissions in writing on the matters, but I have no problem if, in, for example, two minutes, you would briefly tell us what you want to submit to the Chamber, but I then certainly not invite you to, to read a four-page document, uh, but just to just briefly indicate what the issues are you want to raise, and I would limit you to, to briefly mention them in two minutes. Please proceed. Mm -hmm. It will be very difficult to do it in two minutes, but I'll try. I'll skip over all the introductory part, and I will say that in 1996, my plenipotentiary representatives, statesmen and ministers, were presented with an offer by Mr. Richard Holbrook on behalf of the United States of America, according to which I had to withdraw from uh, public life. Uh, I had to make certain gestures, and in return, the USA would fulfill their commitments. Uh, this was on behalf of the United States of America, uh, Mr. Holbrook didn't say that on his own behalf, because when I mentioned to him my meetings with President Carter, he told me that he respected President Carter, but he was at that moment working for President Clinton. Uh, my commitment uh, was to withdraw and not to endanger in any way the implementation of the Dayton Agreement to withdraw even from literary life and any form of public life. Mr. Kajic, apparently you want to bring to the attention of this chamber that some agreements apparently between persons um, attached to states were made of course, the Chamber is not aware of any such agreements. If you want to raise this issue, then, of course, it would be important for us to then have the full facts and evidence on those facts so that we can consider the matter. And also, it would be important then to 
explain to the Chamber what consequences this should have, in your view, for the work of this tribunal. Uh, we are looking forward to receiving such submissions um, and then we'll see in which context they might best be understood as a challenge to the exercise of the jurisdiction or what other uh, context would be appropriate. Um, is there an other matter you would like to raise? Uh, yeah, missing the, uh... I believe that this is very important for my fate and for my legal position because here I'm not calling it a question the court. I want to show why I'm appearing before this court only now rather than in 1996, uh, 97 or 98 when I had the intention of appearing here but at that time I was in danger of being liquidated because I had made a deal that although Mr. Holbrook tried to honor Mr. William Steibner testified that uh, uh, attempts were made to persuade the chief prosecutor to, with, to withdraw the indictment, but uh, Richard Goldstone threatened to resign if that was done. So I, w there was an intention to liquidate me. M Mr. Kerjic, you started by saying, I believe that this is very important. I'm not denying at this moment that this may be a very important issue for you, although it is not a matter to be raised during the initial appearance. Uh, I do understand that you consider these backgrounds to be explanatory for your appearance here only today. You'll get ample opportunity to explain this to the Chamber. Is there any other matter you'd like to raise? In that case, if I am restricted in this way, I wish to say that in Belgrade I was arrested irregularly again. For three days I was kidnapped by civilians whose identity I ignored. I was kept in a place that uh, I also ignored. My rights were not uh, told me. I had no right for a telephone to a telephone call or even a text message to my friends uh, lest they search for me in hospitals and morgues. And only after three days I was turned over to the special court after which all the proceedings that followed were regular. Similarly, there had been many irregularities even before that, but one of the latest ones is the issue of the latest statements of the chief prosecutor, wherein he promised great speed, and that worries me. Does the prosecutor have a privileged position before the trial chamber, or maybe he had made a deal behind the back of the defense with the trial chamber. Mr. Yep. Tiga. Yes, Your Honor. The court provided Mr. Karadich with an opportunity to foreshadow the motions it invited him to make if he saw fit. If he chooses to represent himself, um, he has to comply with the rules and procedures uh, of this institution. The court has advised him uh, that this is not the moment to uh, argue those motions. Um, the court, as indicated, does not wish to prevent him from making motions uh, appropriately and uh, pursuant to the uh, proper procedures and when the right opportunity presents itself. But as the court indicated, this is not the time and, uh, and place. Mr. Gartic, I do understand that you want to raise irregularities during your arrest in Belgrade. And uh, if you make submissions in that respect, the Chamber then, of course, can consider whether this should have any consequences for the proceedings before this tribunal. But again, um, Mr. Tigger is right, and I think I explained it to you earlier, that these matters are best dealt with in motions and not during an initial appearance, which is primarily 
aiming at informing about your rights, you, informing you about your rights, and about informing the chamber on the pleas you want to enter. We have, of course, delayed that now with 30 days. Is there any other matter you would like to raise? <laughs> I must say that this is a matter of life and death. If Mr. Holbrook still wants my death and regrets that there is no death sentence here, I wonder if his arm is long enough to reach me here. That's one thing. And the second thing is whether am I... Mr. Katic, you either do not fully understand or you ignore my earlier instructions. That is that you should raise these matters before the chamber at an appropriate moment. And the appropriate moment is not now. Uh, this, again, does not deny the importance of the matters you would like to raise, but this is not a setting in which we can um, deal with uh, the matters you apparently want to raise. Is there any other matter, Mr. Karacic? Well, in that case, I will hand over a submission right now, the paper uh, with the text that I wanted to present. But I have two concerns. I have, I have a concern for my life and this concern about the promised speed. Speed matters in a showdown between gunslingers, but it's uh, out of place uh, in a court. I want to have equity of arms with the prosecution and I don't want to be put in a position where a regular and fair trial is impossible. I hope the registry can accept this document on four pages and this is my filing. The, the Chamber, <clears throat> uh, before making filings, um, uh, Mr. Kajic, they will follow the uh, procedures. It's in this court you do not just hand over a piece of paper. We will consider, I will consider with my colleagues, um, whether or not uh, the matters you would like to raise, uh, whether we can accept them in this way, we'll let you know about that. So please keep a copy for yourself uh, and hand it over to us if we feel that this is a procedural way in which we can accept um, submissions by you. Um, Mr. Kajic, uh, from your earlier words, I noted that you have some concerns about your safety and security. Safety and security of an accused in a detention unit is primarily um, the responsibility and the competence of the registry. Um, this is not to say that the Chamber cannot have concerns about it, but safety and security concerns should be addressed primarily to the Registrar. And almost, if not all, of the decisions taken by the Registrar in this respect uh, can be reviewed by the President of this Tribunal, not by the Trial Chamber, but by the President. Uh, so, therefore, uh, if safety and security concerns are bothering you at this moment, please address the registrar, inform the registrar about your concerns, and perhaps start discussing with them what to undertake in order to meet these concerns. Is there any other matter, Mr. Karacic? I would like to know whom I should approach with my concerns and anxieties uh, regarding the irregularities in this process. If it is about irregularities which may have a bearing on the proceedings, such as illegal arrest or these kind of things, then you can make submissions to the Chamber. If you want to address matters of personal safety and security in the detention unit, then you should address the registrar. And um, in the days to come, uh, I take it that there will be frequent contact anyhow with the representatives of the registry 
and um, then you can discuss with them what would be the most effective way of bringing your concerns to their attention. They'll come and see you. Any other matter, Mr. Mr. Karadzic? Not for now. Um, Mr. Karadzic, then finally I'd like to uh, ask you <coughs> whether you have been treated well in, since you arrived in The Hague, if there's any problem with the way in which you are treated. I have no complaints against the treatment by official persons or the premises where I'm kept. I've been in worse places, so everything is all right. Thank you for that answer. Finally, um, I'd like to ask you whether you have any health concerns at this moment, and again, you're free to um, ask me to address these matters in private session if you would wish to do so. Um, do you have any health concerns and if so, would you like to deal with them in private session or in public session? My health is perfect and there is no need for a private session. That's good to hear. Um, Mr. Karadzic, um, this concludes this initial appearance. Um, I hereby adjourn the proceedings until Friday, the 29th of August, 2008, quarter past two in the afternoon in this same courtroom. All right. Thank you, Oliver.